Hello everybody and welcome back to the bass guitar build series. It is the moment of truth and you know that I'm going to subject you to that suspenseful music again. Let's get going. Moment of truth. I genuinely haven't taken this off yet. God, I hope this has worked. Stock has been rough cut to its final size. Now I want to flush trim the body, or sorry, the buckeye burr to the body, and I'm also going to expose the rest of the cracks in there. But to do that, I actually need to know where the cracks are. So I'm going to clamp it upright in the vise, being careful not to hit the light. Then I'm going to drill through from the other side and a few of these cracks, so it gives me some sort of area to work to, and then I'll come in with the flush trim router from the other side and hopefully expose the rest of them. In a couple of areas, the bearing started hitting the brass rod below, so I wasn't able to completely flush through the top. So I've got my little handy Japanese razor saw here to finish that off. Right, so I've been going at it for quite a while now and it's looking good but where is my thingy but the voids that I have cut out artificially are looking quite artificial <laughs> compared to the natural voids in there so instead of sanding those inside faces because they're a little bit chopped up at the moment anyway I might as well just carve them exactly the same as I did with the insides and kind of uh, tie it all together I suppose. Okay, so I've been sanding for what seems like absolute hours now, but I think we're, they're good enough. They feel a little bit bumpy still, which is exactly what I wanted, kind of mimic what we've got going on here, but they are nice and smooth as well, so you can't uh, catch your finger on them or anything like that. So we need to blend these into the Buckeye Burr that exists on top, and I've made this tiny little brush used by chopping off existing bristles on a paintbrush and masking taping them together. So we're gonna pop some dye into this pot, paint the insides of these black and then maybe just blend the outsides a little bit into the Buckeye Burr. I, I don't really know what I'm doing to be honest, we're just gonna go for it and see what happens. So it's looking good, but it's there's a few areas where there's just no gradient whatsoever. It's just Buckeye Burr and then black. It's, it kind of just looks like badly applied lipstick or something like that. So I'm gonna try and get some sort of gradient going. I think I've got some 240 grit sandpaper here. I'm gonna rough over the edges a bit and I might put a bit of super glue on it because that'll mimic the epoxy finish that I've got here, but just add a little gradient to it. That's what I'm hoping it'll do anyway. Let's give it a go. That hasn't worked whatsoever. Uh, I think we'll just stick with what we got then. Now, amidst all this mess, 
I want to get the tuning pegs sorted out and I don't have a template to do this. So this is the method that I used before and it worked fine. So what I've got here is two strips of masking tape with the string locations marked on it. And I'm just gonna put the ruler, line it up with the first B string on there and where that will be, <laughs> where that will be. And then I've got the nut from the tuner and that is just gonna go against that string. So, ooh, headstock's actually a little bit offset here. So I can take down a bit of material on the top. I did think that looked a bit too much up there. And what we'll do is we'll give a little mark there. And we'll move on to the next, the E string. So I've got a couple of these string retainer things. I won't take them out of the packaging yet. But what these do is if there isn't enough tension pulling down on these tuning pegs from the nut, you can basically anchor the string to go down here and then along to the tuning peg. So that's exactly what these do. They'll anchor it down here closer to these two ones and therefore provide more tension on the nut. So by this point, everything is glued up and it looks like a guitar. It's kind of just installing hardware, cleaning up and um, doing a few other little jobs here and there. So nothing particularly exciting, but one thing that I have been putting off throughout this entire thing is leveling the frets. When you whack these in, they're not gonna be perfectly flat despite me planing this fretboard perfectly flat. There's still gonna be small undulations in it where frets haven't bottomed out properly and I don't know. There's all sorts of variables in it. So I need to get this perfectly flat, but what that means is I need to adjust the truss rods first in order to make sure that this neck is perfectly flat because again, wood movement might have happened while I've been working on the rest of it and this neck might be bowing. Also, if I wax some of the frets in, they might be providing tension on this side and then making it bow the opposite way. So I need to correct the neck before leveling the frets or else all will be for naught. But the problem with that is that I cannot get access to the truss rod at the moment because I haven't shaped this area back yet. Now I don't have a bobbin sander to do this, um, so it's gonna be handwork, which is going to be interesting, I think. So first, I think I'm gonna clean the workbench because this is uh, pretty atrocious. So I think to begin with, I'm just gonna cross cut this off diagonally because I want to do a small curve thing on here. And then I'll just refine it with this chisel. I mean, if it gives a rough finish at the end of it, I don't really mind because the rest of the guitar is all gnarly anyway. So um, yeah, that's going to be my excuse. Uh, oh God, this is shadowing the line. Uh, oh, I have lighting. Why don't I just use that? Oh, now I'm in the way. Nope. <laughs> Do I have to hug this light? Is that, is that how it's gonna be? No, that's not good. No, let's not do that. So I couldn't see this before, but the um, Allen key rods for the truss rods that I need to adjust are actually like compressed a little bit below these lovely round bottom grooves that I cut with the router. So I need to gouge these out a little bit more in order to properly get access. In fact, I'll show you on the camera. I'll bump up the ice over it. You might be able to see. There you go. So you see, I don't know, I might be able to get access to those. A bit grubby actually. Definitely need a good old clean up in here, but yeah, it's gonna be difficult to adjust those as it is, I think. I'm gonna to need to get a gouge on them. Right, after lots of cleaning out, where did I put it, Allen key? There we go. After lots of cleaning out, it works. So you can put the Allen key in there, and then as you turn it, the truss rod is engaging, and if I turn it the other way, it is engaging that way as well, which is good. It means that that one's working, and this one is also working as well. Now what I need at this point is a notched straight edge so I can lay it flat across the actual ebony itself but then have little bridges that go over the top of the frets because like I said, we're not entirely sure if the frets are level yet. Whereas at one point I planed that ebony perfectly flat so I know that I can get that flat which would mean adjusting the truss rod. So a notched straight edge, you can buy them from Stumac and Crimson Custom Guitars but I don't wanna splash out. I've got this straight edge here and I dropped it once upon a time and I'm not entirely sure if I do trust it as a straight edge. Cost me about 20 quid I think and 
I have a bandsaw blade that can cut metal. So you can probably imagine what I'm going to do. It seems a little bit barbaric, but we're going to make a notched straight edge. So I'll put this straight down the center of the guitar. Get it centralized on there roughly, and then put a little mark where I need to cut each of the frets. And then we will cut them out on here. So before doing anything, probably best to check that it is uh, still straight. Just checking it on my planer bed. Yeah, it's still straight. So this will go on the fretboard. There we go, spaced over all of the frets. And, aha, what we expected. There's a big bump in the middle of it, probably from where all of these frets have been hammered in. And they've applied tension to this face here and caused it to bow away. So this is why you install truss rods in there. Just need to remember which way I've got to turn them now. Uh, let's give that a test. I have no idea how sensitive these things are. Is that better? Uh, I think that's getting better. Ooh, there is force applying to these now. I feel like they're probably doing something. Still not quite there. Oh, that one's definitely doing something, isn't it? Still not there. I'm going to turn it the other way. So clockwise. No, that is 100% worse. So it is the other way. We just got to commit to it. Right, yeah, so that is definitely anti-clockwise, I need to turn it, but what I'm thinking is I'm having to turn these quite a lot in order to apply enough force to get rid of this bow in the neck because there's a lot of material for it still to uh, try and bend back. I'm wondering if it would be more sensible to do this job after I've shaped the neck so then there's less material for it to try and bend backwards because if I try and do too much here, I'm just imagining it like punching up the fretboard here and just completely ruining all that ebony which um, would kind of write off the entire project. So yeah, I'm gonna take that pressure off. We'll do it after the neck has been shaped. So it's starting to get a bit late and I still need to edit a video tonight before going off for the weekend, but I wanna get this planed. We're going to call it there for this episode it's been quite a long day not a lot of it has been filmed because it's been pretty laborious tasks pretty much all of today it's just been cleaning up after that big glue up we had but headstock is shaped the body is all looking lovely i think next episode we're going to be focused on installing all of the hardware and little bits like that so see you then mm -hmm.